string steel. It's rather nice, isn't it? But what's it for? Ah, well, it's a ruler. Not much use, though, because it's curling up. Well, there's a bit of magic here, because when you take it to the end, and you gently click it like that, click, and one here, click, it stays rigid. Magic. And when you click it again, it curls up again. So it's a lovely way of putting it back in your pocket again. It's called, what well, I called it the snap ruler, and it was invented in 1976, the first pattern that came out in America. But I've got a Canadian and Italian versions of them since then. Most of them were this length, so about a yard long. Occasionally you come across a shorter one. This one I picked up in an antique shop in Atlanta. is a shorter one, and it's a way of advertising, too, on the back of them. They had lots of advertising, which they would in America. Since sometime in the late 80s, I think it was, some brilliant person, I'd love to find out who it was, thought the idea of making a toy out of it. Originally, they simply made it like this, again, with ruler measurements on it. But they found that um, it could be thrown on the wrist and snapped like that. And for children, it's much more fun slapping these on their wrist or throwing them up in the air and slapping on the wrist than measuring things. So they started dropping the ruler side of it, which they still have from time to time kept up, and started making all these, all these came out in the early 90s, 1991 I think this lot came out, all with different designs, different materials, but inside each of them was the same thing, a, piece, a little piece of spring steel in this curious form, and when it snapped, it rolls up like that. That's obviously much too sharp for kids, so in every case they've made these, they've always made sure that they've got them well covered with different materials. And then children, being what they are, love to explore ideas. So one of the first things they discovered was you could actually make it um, do various tricks. If you put it on your fingers like this, roll back the sleeve, lift it up, and then it does an action like that. Beautiful. All that's doing is throw it up in the air, bring it down on my wrist, preferably a bony wrist, and automatically forms a loop. Another trick they discovered, which again I had to practice, was putting it like that. That's going to slap down on the wrist when it's ready, but hang on a sec, before you do that, put that at right angles like that. And then it's a case of abracadabra. One, two, three. Oh, isn't that magic? I suspect there's a lot more tricks too which I haven't yet found out, so I'll have to start looking for them. But those are the original ideas that I came across. Also, very early in the 90s, they started exploring different types of cover for them. These ones are all made of a kind of rubberized plastic. They don't work that well, and I've, I have to say I haven't seen them since then. I mean, the idea is okay, it goes on the wrist, but it's quite soft because it can't go fast because there's so much resistance from the rubber, and sometimes they don't stay out very well. But the idea was they would go on the wrist and they look like little animals. And I think also the ends started coming apart. You can see that starting to play. So I think this lot was eventually dropped, but at the idea that for a collector love, loving different things, that's quite fun to find and some of the early versions which didn't quite work. I've got one here which I dropped when I want to get out. So I want to show you because I got this from Germany at the time and it's the only one I've come across of this size. Again, it was made into form of a ruler. The German company was making lots and lots of very small items. This was one of them. It just about goes on my wrist, but it's almost not a wrist slapper, but a finger slapper, I would say, wouldn't you? Goes on the wrist like a thing. Again, that's not appeared since then. I think it was the early 80s. Uh, and I saw it at the time, picked up a sample, and, oh, sorry, the early 90s, because that's when I was going to Nuremberg regularly. And then soon after that, blow me, they started developing a whole series of what's really uh, wristwatch straps. But they're all wrist slappers. There's a perfectly good little electronic watch, and it goes on the wrist, and it's so easy to do and take it off when you're finished. This one's rather fun, it looks like a piano. But again, it goes on the wrist and tightens. Instead of having to get the little leather thing and putting it on, you just slap it on the wrist and it's so easy. And this one's very nice because it's got a bit lovely sort of um, material on it too. But again, a cheerful face and it goes on the wrist and sits there. So lots of that went on. More recently, I discovered they started putting little animals on it. And here's a lovely example one. He's actually fixed onto the wrist slapper. So it's your little pet dog and he'll sit in your, on your wrist or perhaps that way up like that. And he'll come off again waiting to be picked up again. <laughs> I also came across a very curious version only about two years ago at New York Toy Fair, which is this one here. I recognise it for what it was. It's that curvature there and the fact that it bends and snaps. It's a wrist snapper, but an extraordinary size. It does go on my wrist, just about. But the idea of this one, and it's something I've never quite got on with, is you're supposed to have it open it up to throw it in the air at different angles or different positions or different holes, and it does various different types of flights through the air. I thought it might come back as a boomerang. It doesn't do that. But it does flow through the air 
in different, um, different paths, different ways, depending on how you're throwing it. And then when you finish throwing with it, well, you can put it back on your wrist, I suppose. So that's, that's quite a nice idea, I think. Just very recently, I've discovered not in a toy shop, but in a hardware shop, they started making these for cyclists. They're wrist snappers again, but of course it's something you can easily put on your arm, or you can put it on your trouser leg in place of, of, of cycle clips. And it's high glow, so if you're cycling along a dark road, you can easily be spotted by motorists in, when they catch this glowing stuff in the, in the headlights. So that's, that's a nice, nice version of it, as a, something quite serious. They're still trying to find a new other types of material put on the outside, and this is another one fairly recently, but again, it doesn't work that well, and I don't think they're going to continue with that one. And the latest version I've just come across is this wonderful type of sequin thing, which is a bit of magic, I think this is. These are ones which change when you stroke them like that. Now, this is going to be a very nice item for kids, because it's a wrist snapper, but at the same time, it's something like a finger fiddle. They can put it in their wrists like that, and then you can stroke it like that, and it'll change colour backwards and forwards. If you don't like that particular colour, well, you can always try another one, couldn't you, on the other wrist? And if you don't like that colour, again, change the colour. What do you think? I think this is going to be a great success. In fact, I'm going to start looking out for this for next year's Christmas pack, I think, because the idea of having a wrist snapper combined with that wonderful secret magic is just heaven. Beautiful. Complete with a little um, finger fiddle as well. What else can we think of? Think of the wrist snapper. The original version was this one here. It's made of metal, but I think there's other ways you can take it. And I'm looking forward to seeing what the designers come up with in the next year or two. Think wrist snapper.